trenches. Ask a nigga what he branches. Triple digits, nigga. Don't forget to mention. Hold hard in the trenches. Ask a nigga what he branches. Triple digits, nigga. Don't forget to mention. Don't forget to mention. I got match. memories. Dead stain the whole room if I let him bleed. Shit was dark. I let this little light him out. First off, what's up, Jerry? Welcome back to another episode of the Chopper Die Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get through the administrative things right quick. Uh, Twitch. Obviously, as always, if you are watching on Twitch and you like the content and you want to contribute to the conversations, each and every conversation, make sure that you are subscribed or, excuse me, following the Trapper Dive and Let Maul Tell the channel. Um, this is a followers only chat. I um, mean, we appreciate every single conversation and every single additive that you guys have for us. Um, YouTube, if you are watching on YouTube and you like the content, make sure you like, subscribe, um, and you'll, you won't miss any single published video that we put out there i publish daily uh damn near daily i mean things like that and obviously the podcast this one is important because this is a film breakdown so if you want to kind of see what we're going into make sure that you are checking out the youtube or twitch when you get a chance but also if you do like the content on the podcast and things like that subscribe rate review it takes five seconds we appreciate it as always again jerry Appreciate you checking in. I told y'all I was, I mean, I was going to do the film thing regardless, but Logan decided to be generous with his time man, and help us out today um, and, and see what's going on with this defense. So Logan, uh, appreciate you joining us tonight, boss, man. How are you feeling? So good, man. I'm excited to start talking about some football. Absolutely. Um, let's go ahead and talk about some football. So I guess the, the best thing or the, the, the layup that we have here to start things off um, is what we know to this point. And in the week seven, um, like if we look at things from a, a, a macro perspective, it's easy to say the, the defense isn't playing well and the offense is inconsistent. Um, but if I were to ask you your narrative for, I mean, obviously we're going to dive into the defense for a little bit, but the offensive side, at least, um, how do you think or what's going on with the offense given its highs and lows, um, especially its highs against the Giants and Falcons um, and somewhat against the Chargers, but then also its lows to this point uh, running into somewhat roadblocks against the Buffalo Bills, New Orleans Saints, and Kansas City Chiefs? Say that again, brother. Sorry, my internet was freaking out. It dropped the call for a second, so I'm moving up stairs. What's going on? <laughs> Um, so I was, I was just saying, um, obviously it's, it's easy to kind of from a, from a broad brush and, and, and say from a fan's perspective that it's easy to say that the defense isn't good and that the offense is inconsistent. But if I was to ask you seven weeks into the season, heading, heading into week seven for Washington football, um, what's exactly going on with their offense? Um, how the narrative that you would put out there, what do you see? Um, but then obviously, uh, given its highs and lows, like what is your truth? Um, given given the, their struggles to this point, what's going on, y'all? This is Jamal, man. And listen, this is just a reminder. If you do appreciate the content, if you do enjoy the discussions, if you enjoy the videos, all that good stuff, man, hit that subscription button. We truly appreciate it. I truly appreciate it, man. We're just trying to grow out here, and uh, support goes a long way. It's as simple as hitting that subscribe and that like button. Uh, comment if you wish, man. Truly appreciate it. Um, I ain't gonna hold you. Go ahead and get back to the show. Uh, see you later. So I think that's a really good question. I think the thing with the defense is that they started really slow. However, over the last two weeks, I've been more impressed with how they've been playing. I know that seems kind of silly. I know a lot of fans have been freaking out about how they've been playing and about the, the product they've been putting on the field. But I think some of the things that they showed early in the season are starting to kind of um, disappear or, or diminish in frequency, right? And that is an encouraging sign to me, right? They're able to create a little bit more pressure. The linebacker play against Kansas City was much better. Secondary didn't give up a big play. There was no coverage bust. I think you could maybe argue that uh, William Jackson, the third's touchdown is a big play, but um, I am happy with the, the way it's going, right? They're starting to look, trend in the direction that I think a good defense should trend. And that's exciting to me. I think the offense has kind of gone the other way, right? Each week they've kind of, gotten a little bit worse. There's a little bit less to be excited about from a play calling standpoint. Um, and then from Taylor Heineke's performance, I think that's the other thing. And as much as I love the guy and I love his story, and I think he's an inspiration to a lot of people, like um, he's just not playing at a super high level. And that's part of the reason why he was on the street uh, two years ago. So 
Uh, I think all of those things are, there's some good defensive stuff. I think the offense as a whole is regressing. So that's my, that's my truth, I guess. Yeah. And um, I think the thing is, and for me, Logan, um, and, and I, I want to see where your head is at with this one. And obviously after this, we can get uh, straight into the defensive side of the football uh, with the all 22. But my thing is with this offense, man, um, I, I felt like, and this is me, this is me going cold cut and, and clear cut. So you can correct me if I'm wrong, right? I think the yeah. thing with this offense is um, what I'm starting to notice is that there is distinctive tiers that they're coming across. And what I mean by that is um, they've had some success against the, the, the Los Angeles Chargers to, what, to whatever degree. Same thing with the Giants. Same thing with the Falcons. But then when we come across teams that are clearly upper tiers just from a, a overall organization standpoint, coaching standpoint, roster standpoint, the Bills, the Saints, the Chiefs, it's become a hassle and a struggle to move the ball against these guys. Um, and that's kind of where I'm starting at in my head, in my picture, is that I'm, un I'm understanding that there is tiers in which they're being successful, and then the upper echelon of teams is finding ways to kind of neutralize the offense. Uh, where is your head at with that? So I think that's a hundred percent accurate statement. I think the, the the core of that question, the thing that is somewhat interesting, is why is that happening? And just based on my film study and you know my approach to kind of prep, prepping for each game, the thing that I've noticed is that Taylor Heineke handles uh, simpler defensive structures a little bit better. So the the Giants, for example, are a very simple defensive structure. They play a lot of cover three. They play a lot. There's a lot of space in the defense. Same thing when you watch, uh, you know, the Falcons, for example, a lot of space in the defense. It's a young defense, new defensive coordinator, guys still understanding kind of the nuance of the scheme. And then I thought maybe for the Sessions group would be even one of the It's a team that does run a simple defensive structure, but they have a much more they have much more talented personnel. And obviously, we all saw how that how that that played out, right? You know, I think there were some throws there that Terrell Heineke was able to make, but overall, he looked uncomfortable and unsettled with the better defensive personnel group of the Saints. So basically I, I use that as a, as a measuring stick, mm -hmm. right? I said, well, he's performing well against simple kind of poorly executed defenses. And then as those defenses get better, obviously his performance diminishes. And that's something you'd expect from a guy um, in his situation, quite frankly, like, and, you know, it's really easy to put it all on Taylor Heineke, but he doesn't have a lot of playmakers at his disposal at the moment. I think it's like Terry, Terry, uh, Terry McLaurin and friends and, the friends right now are not a very strong group. And I think that's something also that's important to consider. The offensive play calling seems to be getting more conservative each week. And I think that's a, that's indicative of people getting injured. Um, you know, the playmakers not being there and then a lack of confidence in Heineke and what he can do with those playmakers. So I think it's an aggregate of, of data that mm -hmm. needs to be assessed, but I do agree with the general sentiment that you brought up, you know, that the, as they play better teams, the offense plays worse. Well, you know, when you said and friends, I was kind of hoping you put uh, J.D. McKissick in that weapon category. But uh, oh, I, I, I mean, I like, I think that's the thing, though, is the, those backs are outstanding playmakers. Right. Yeah. Uh, but you need more than two good running backs and a receiver. Yeah. Logan Thomas is hurt. Curtis Samuel hasn't played. De'Ami Brown hasn't matured the way we thought. You know, Cam Sims, a guy who made a lot of big plays last year, has been injured for the majority of the season thus far. And. You know, Ricky Seals Jones is kind of the best next player. And he was a guy that was on the street last year or going into this offseason. So I think when you look at it from that standpoint, it's kind of like there's not a lot to work with here offensively. Yeah. You know, yes, you can run the football and you'd like to see more creative usage of those guys. You mentioned McKissick, Gibson, get those guys in the field in different packages, find ways to use their skill sets because there's really not a lot else at the moment. Absolutely. Um, okay. All right. So, um, again, first and foremost, I don't know if you're, if the, the, the connection part was going on, but I do appreciate your time. I do appreciate you checking in so we can, we can watch this defensive side and see what they had going on against the Kansas City Chiefs. I do like the narrative though, that you did mention that, um, they are playing better at least the, the last two weeks, things are starting to shape together. Um, and, and that's interesting given that, cause I'll be, I'll be honest. I, I, I don't think that things, I didn't think that things have improved but understanding that you you do this like this is part of this is this is your new this is your new jobs of sorts like it's it's kind of interesting to hear uh the, a different alternative uh, that things are actually getting a little bit better um okay all right so where are we at um uh, this is the first quarter 
And let me ask you, like, what would be an easier way to kind of do this? Um, do you want to go drive by drive at least? Um, cause I, how, how much time do we have you for just to just be quite frank, what, 30 minutes or so, 35, 40? Yeah, well, I can stay 40 minutes, an hour, you know, okay. whatever you need. I'd like to, if the tighter, the better. But, you know, if we're having fun to roll, we're on a roll. OK. All right. So um, eight o'clock is usually when I'm done, but I won't hold you no longer than that. Um, and we can get up out of here. All right. So I guess uh, drive by drive. We'll start with the first drive here. Um, the first drive for everybody that's listening to the podcast is going to be um, the Kansas City Chiefs touchdown drive that made it seven nothing, ten plays, ninety five yards. That took up four minutes and fifty seconds. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and see this one. Oh, they don't even have all the plays on here. Jesus Christ. Okay. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Go along. Um, how does it look on your screens? I'm not sure. Does it have the our our pictures on the left on the left or right? I don't know if I can. Oh, uh, the right. This. Yes, on the right. How does it look now? Or is it? Looks good. Yeah, okay. I think it looks good. Actually, here we go. All right. So let's go ahead and go back so we can have a look. All right. So. Right now, this is a six-yard gain on second down, I believe. Yeah, second and three on Kansas City 12 sideline. Uh, what we're looking at right now, well, I'll, I guess I'll let you talk, Ashton. I'll go through the play first and then rewind it back. Yeah. Which is something simple, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a double stick concept, so you get a five-yard out by uh, basically, like, it doesn't really matter the allocation of the positions, but you get an out. And then it flat basically, and it's a really good opportunity to kind of beat this like soft shoe cover two the defense has going. And I think this is a good philosophy here by the defense, right? Okay. You know, this is basically what Buffalo did. They run. You see these two safeties back here. Uh, I don't know who these people are. Thirty one and whoever like, this guy is under the screen. Um, that looks like Bobby and thirty. Cam Curl, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't and then you've got the. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So basically, like you get these two deep safeties, then you get the kind of the quarters, 25. And I was that down at the bottom there, 23. They're kind 23. of playing the flats. Yep. You get three guys underneath. This is good coverage. The Bills basically ran this the whole game. And the whole point here is to give them this kind of stuff underneath and then rally and tackle to the football, right? Mm -hmm. And the idea being here is that Kansas City has not shown an ability over the course of the season to sustain a drive for 10, 15 plays. They do it here. But obviously, on the subsequent drives, they fail in that area. Does that make sense? So, like, I think this is pretty sound. Like, this is a good philosophy that Jack Del Rio came up with here. So, when when we do these things, or or when Washington, I'm not I'm not a we. Well, when is the is the idea to kind of tighten up when the field gets shorter, or is it more so just hoping that they do make that mistake that kind of gets them off the field? So, if you think about it, one of the things with cover two is like think about it as like. Um, I can't even think of a good analogy, but like as the as the field gets shorter, those windows and those zones naturally get tighter, right? Okay. And as those zones and windows naturally get tighter, the throwing lanes get harder to make. And the idea being is that as you are basically using the offense's efficiency to make them less efficient in the red zone, <clears throat> which is the whole idea behind Jack Del Rio's last year defense as well. Remember, it was very bend but don't break. They gave up a lot of yards, yeah. but their production in the red zone was very high. So it's a similar philosophy to that, right? Okay, so essentially, I'll, I'll go ahead and play this one right quick first and then rewind it. But essentially, it sounds like I'm not saying it's a bad thing, Logan, but it sounds like sometimes like if you know what you're up against, you're kind of conceding the fact they're going to move the ball. So you have to find ways around that. And, and that's kind of what this was, I'd imagine this game plan. Going yeah, on. yeah, I mean, basically, I like this play here. Go back. That's a yep. cool play. So basically, one of the things about this that's fun is yeah, that you get into this thing takes forever. Do this, yeah, this screen's gross. My my NFL game pass is terrible. Uh, so there what you go. get there, interesting offensively there, is you get a 21 personnel. Does everyone know what 21 personnel is? Uh, 21, I think that's, 21 is two tight ends and one running back. Two two backs and two one, backs. Uh, one tight end. Yeah, you okay, got it. got it. Uh, and so basically what they did there is the defense, they matched their coverage to the personnel, right? So they, you see, you got four men, you got three men in the box. They're rotating the other safety down in. They're playing like a version of cover three because they're expecting – a run here, right? And this is a good play call by Kansas City to get them to get this response by the Washington football team, and they call a play action pass and lead Kelsey out because watch uh, Collins, Jamin, and Holcomb here when they when this play goes, they all run to the run, which is what they're supposed to do. Like mm -hmm. that's what their keys are telling them to do. Then you sleep Kelsey out behind it. It's a good job by Jamin reacting late, but obviously there's a play here to be made. See that? 
See that action by the linebacker? Yeah. This is a great play call. This is a nice, I would say this is a nice job by Jack Del Rio matching the personnel, right? A higher proclivity of run in 21 personnel. But again, it's really hard to call defenses in the NFL. This in this way. Playing got Kelsey. All right. Um, your overall opinion as we're, I guess since we're just getting started, let me go to the next play. Your overall opinion on Jamin Davis as he as he played throughout this game. Where was that at? What was the question? How has Jamie Davis been doing? Yeah, yeah, I was just saying. Uh, your since we're just getting started, I was just saying. What was your overall opinion heading in, uh, after you after you seen the game? What was your overall opinion on how Jamie Davis did play? So I thought this was my this was my favorite game by Jamie Davis. To be quite frank, like this pressure right here by him is very nice. Good pressure on the center. Um, good blitzing pattern. He looked fast. He looked aggressive. All the things that made you think he deserves to be the 19th pick overall in college were kind of brought to light here in a really good way. I think um, one of the things, like he, in coverage, he just did some really nice intuitive things, things mm -hmm. that guys like John Bostick up to this point have not been doing. And that's not a knock on John, but that's one of the things that Jamin excels at. That's his strength. Did a good nice. job of that. He, he made a really nice, uh, he made some really nice plays in the run, which is not his strong suit, but he looked hurt. really dynamic doing it. So okay. this one, what was this? Third and one on Kansas City's 47 yard line. They stop uh, Kansas City to make it, I believe, fourth and two. Oh, fourth and one. Fourth okay, and, fourth and fourth one. And one yeah. So this is the play that we're looking at. Fourth and one on Kansas City, forty-seven. Um. Oh Lord. All right. Let me see. Okay. So okay. basically, you get like an off tackle run, or you get like a duo. They call this duo. So I think duo is like all double teams on the front side of the formation here. So to the left, the top of the screen, all double teams. And you can see Cole Holcomb get a little bit lost in the wash here. Like, I think he's got this backside A gap. So between okay. the center and the right guard and watch how he gets a little stacked behind the nose, as opposed to filling his gap. He thinks the run's hitting to the left side of the quarterback. So it makes sense that he kind of bumps over there and great job by the back being patient and kind of filling this empty gap here and, you know, eventually make the tackle. But that's why it's hard. That's why teams are going for it more in fourth and one statistically it's advantageous. Yeah, I believe that. Okay, where are we at? Um, I'll just keep it rolling. 19 yards. Okay. Oh Lord, it was a few big plays coming up. Okay. Let me go back to the full screen. So this is fourth, first and ten on Washington's 48. Um, Kansas City Chiefs are moving the ball. Now yeah, I really like back. this. I mean. I like this play. I like this play by Kansas City. I like this play by Washington, right? So, again, you get this cover two shell, right? So, you got these three linebackers in the middle. You got this corner down at the bottom here on the nub side of the formation. You got a corner up top. <clears throat> and then you got these two safeties deep. And so, this is this basically ends up playing like a Tampa two. And okay. basically, they're trying to get um, Tyreek Hill isolated on the linebacker. And I, what I like about this is that Jamin kind of, he's not, he follows this route, even though it's not his route to follow necessarily. Like he understands where the quarterback's over the football. He understands the eyes. Really Landon Collins here, if you let the play go, should keep his depth under this route by Tyreek Hill and probably make a play on the football here. But, you know, Landon is an aggressive football player and tries to get up here uh, on the, see how he steps up there. Yeah, he went, right? So he good job by Dave Jamin kind of closing that window, reading Patrick Mahomes' eyes. Like that's a tough route for middle Jamin. linebacker to defend it. Oh, yeah. So, like, look at his hips. Look at how he's able to close that. That's a nice job. Um, and that's really not his play to make. You know, like, Colin should be deeper. They should force the check down there. I, I, so I was just about to ask that, Logan. So when you're seeing something like this and you see, like, in my head, in my head, just looking at it from a, a, a couch perspective, it would make sense for Landon to take Kelsey. But you're saying, essentially, on the first and 10, obviously, understand the situation I mean, understanding Landon's assignment a little bit clearer than I do, or pretty much clearer than I do, he should have stayed back a little bit to, to monitor Kelsey. I mean, excuse me. Uh, so with this cover two, right, the whole idea is you want to force the quarterback to check the football down, right? Okay. So Landon should stay deep until the quarterback resets to throw the flat and then rally to make the tackle in the flat, right? Okay. He's a little aggressive here, right? He, watch, if you want to play, you see him stands afterwards, after the, the ball's oh, been completed, Lord. like he knows. I know this is terrible, but yeah. he, he knows that the uh, he knows that the the that the um right, that he go. he made a mistake. Like watch him, like watch the ball is completed. He claps his hands. Yeah. He knows that he should have kept his depth there. In my opinion, when I see that kind of body language, to me that's 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 what that tells you. I let this one run through. Here we go. It clears up. 
So this is one of the moments where I think I understood what you were saying, where the defense was kind of sound, but they like, I think you didn't mention this part, but Kansas city made a ton of plays on their side too. It wasn't all just Washington, like playing bad. I understand that the other team has to make plays too. And this is, I guess I would imagine this is one of those moments. Obviously the cornerback still needs to turn around, but this is a, a huge play by, I don't even know, 88, whoever the hell he is. <laughs> yeah, he's a converted wide receiver from like that junior college. Anyway, so like this this is one of those plays where I look at this and I say like, Landon Collins is in really good position here. He's okay. in really good position. You can't be in better position here. And then they just make a play. And I understand Landon Collins is, is here and he's on a big contract, but this is not his forte, right? He's a physical run support player. And this is pretty good for him in terms of coverage. Like, I don't know how you get much tighter than that. Maybe you say, yeah. look back at the ball. He tries to play the hands late. Like, sometimes they make plays. They're professional players, too. And that's the way I look at that. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, that's And that's kind of where I was getting at. Like, that was – I felt that that was good coverage. And at the same time, like, when you're uh, when you're in a position like that, you did you did what you can do. Oh, they didn't show the, the touchdown. That's why. So, they only show hi certain highlights. Okay, I'm following. Okay. But, yeah, that's, that's where I was getting at. I agree with you. All right. Um, here we go. All right. And we go back up. And see, like this to me is really positive. You know, like the penetration they're getting, the way they're fighting off blocks, there's no running lanes. This is good stuff, you know. Oh, this is landing. So this is they they truly was had they so for some reason I guess the past well, I guess throughout the season they've been using landing in the box a lot, but um, I think if I'm not mistaken, Logan, the last couple of weeks or maybe last three weeks, they've been using him exclusively in the box. If I, if I'm not mistaken or not I mean, exclusively, been, but primarily, no, no, not exclusively, but yeah, they've, they've been playing to a skill set. Like right now they're basically in like dime defense. You know what I mean? They've got one linebacker and six defensive backs and then four down linemen. Is that right? Yeah. My math's right there. And so like, yeah, like play to his skill set. He's an aggressive run player. You know what I mean? Like yeah. let him be that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that this was probably one of the, the defensive line's best game too, in, in terms of pressure. Um, in my opinion, I don't know. Like, it, in other positions, or excuse me, other other areas in which you would have thought like Matt Ryan or Jameis Winston or even Daniel Jones got a lot of pressure on them, it didn't really happen as much as as much as you'd expect, especially the Giants, given that their offensive line was so banged up heading into that game. This one was really good. Yeah, so this is an interesting one here, like just from a schematic idea. standpoint. Okay. Like, okay. so basically, like, see how Landon Collins is walked over Tyree Kill in the slot here? Okay. You see that? Okay. And then you see how there's two linebackers down here at the bottom, uh, Jamin and Holcomb. Yeah. Yep. So Collins is part of this fit. He's got the B gap. So does everyone know what gaps are? You go with the gaps. Yeah, A, B, um, C, D. Yeah, yeah. So he's got the B gap to the left side of the offensive formation, right? But if they run an RPO here, he's got to cover Tyree Kill here. He's got to cover this concept over here, kind of fill the void. And so Jamin and Holcomb, I think, are playing like a gap and a half. So, like, they have nah, – I don't know like, what that means, like, in, in a sense of gap and a half. Like, they have that the, – the gap in front of them, but also the gap next to them. Like, obviously. Yeah, right. So, like, they, they really – so Jamin's responsibility here is the right – offensive rights A gap. Offensive right, yeah, A gap there. But, like, because there's a chance that Collins could be late here, he might have to play to the front side A. He might have to. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's like a gap and a half. He's like – it's not two gapping because he's got one prim primary spot, and that's really Landon's gap. But he, knowing Landon's going to be late, he might have to fit over there. So I think that's one of the reasons here why um, Holcomb and Jamin kind of take this lateral step here because they both kind of have to account for now. this front side run. I need you to act better. Can you pass? I'm gonna start it from the beginning because this is this is frustrating. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now just so watch them kind of take this big step forward, and then they're like reading the down block, you know, as opposed to triggering forward. And I think a big reason for that is because they have this gap and a half principle here. All right, second and ten on Kansas City's 25. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Kansas City's. By the way, Kansas City's second possession uh, following their uh, touchdown drive. So we're on third and four at Kansas City 31. All right. This won't run out. Ooh. Yeah, this is uh this man coverage. Was this third down you said? 
Yeah, this is third and four on Kansas City's 31. I'm going to go ahead and play it. So this is something Jack Del does a lot. He calls a lot of man coverage on third down. And so one of the things that I've been a little disappointed with is William Jackson the third and his in his man coverage. Because I think one of the things they've told him is they prefer him to have better feet in, with his man coverage as opposed to using his hands. Okay. And if you watch his feet at the beginning here, he kind of is like, for lack of a better word, he's got like panic feet. You know what I mean? He kind of opens up to the inside too quickly and opens the gate the other way. Because if you look at the coverage across the board, it's pretty tight. And he's not in a terrible position here, but I think he could be helped by using his feet a little bit better, just being a little bit more patient. Like okay. if you let it play, I think you'll be able to see I what I'm you. talking about. All right. So watch him here, like how he's so like he's so aggressive. You know what I mean? Like he just needs to kind of soft shoe that a little bit more. And I think he'd be all right. A little, a little better spot. And, like, that guy's a fast player. And maybe that's why he's trying to be aggressive at the start here. But just kind of relax. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't need to jump on that as quick. Like I see you saying he committed, that's he committed a little bit too earlier than he should have. Like, I think his inside. feet could be better is what I'm saying. And what and I will say, like, that's really good coverage against a fast football player. And one of the reasons he doesn't have safety up over top is because they're uh -huh. cutting the crosser by Tyree Kill there. So, like uh – -huh. So I think that's another thing to consider. Like, I, like a lot of people see that, so that's that's a bad play by William Jackson. I'm kind of the same way. This is the first time I'm seeing the All-22. And, like, to me, that's pretty good coverage. Like, it's – can it be better? Like, minutely, yes. But I think that's a pretty good play. And, like, I think fans see the big play. They say, oh, William Jackson III is having a rough season. But, like, I don't know how you get much better – on that play. I know he struggled later with other stuff, but that play is pretty solid in my opinion. So, so let me ask you a question then um, about William Jackson before we get into this one. Um, he mentioned, he mentioned uh, in the, in the preseason, I would say, um, I haven't really heard it since the regular season started. He mentioned that he was still getting adjusted to the system. Now I'm not sitting here going to say that contributes to his footwork. I don't like, I wouldn't say that part, but I, what, what does that mean in the sense of maybe he's not understanding something on the field? Like, what exactly does that mean when he says he's getting adjusted to the system? Because, um, again, like you said, fans can kind of see him saying, like, he hasn't had the best year uh, after, you know, coming here from Cincinnati. But I don't know, like, the science behind when he says system versus what we're seeing on the field. Because all we see, like, in big moments is him not looking too good. And I, I want to kind of like distinguish what, what it is that he's talking about. Well, I think it's, it's multi, it's multi uh, faceted. It's multifactorial in the sense that like, um, not only is there a new technique that they're teaching him, which he's talked about a little bit, uh, okay. but also like people run defenses differently. It's not like everyone cover runs cover three and it's exactly the same across the league. Right. There's a little bit of nuance and a little bit of specificity, specificity that each team cultivates when running cover three. And so there are rules, right? Let's say you get a three by one. Okay. Um, the way that Seattle runs cover three is a little different than like the way the Washington football team run, runs cover three, right? And so understanding those rules and how to match different concepts, like for example, this they run more zone here than they did than he did when he was in Cincinnati. So understanding the zone concepts at a high level, I think is something that is probably pretty challenging for him. And it requires a ton of communication and a ton of familiarity. Because defense is such a reactive thing. Like you're reacting to the formation, you're reacting to the personnel, you're reacting to the route combination. So if you don't understand how those route concepts um, are trying to beat the coverage and your rules versus a specific route concept, you're going to look like a, a little silly sometimes. And I think, you know, they've got a whole bunch of new pieces back there. And I think that was one of the reasons why they struggled early on in the season. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get to this one. Um, I'll, run, I'll run the play. Go back. This is first and 10, everybody, though, by the way. First and 10 at Washington's 20 after the big play um, down the sideline. So I'll go ahead and play. So, you, so you mentioned Jamin Davis earlier, and yep. this is something that he was having a really hard time with Here we go. earlier in the season, and that was diagnosing runs. And he's, he's the middle guy right here, kind of right under your cursor. And, like, watch him get to the play side of the run, fit this gap correctly, and then take on this block and squeeze the hole so that Holcomb can make the tackle running it down from the weak side. I think this is really good because this is something he wasn't doing. Like, see how quick he is here? Bang, nice pop. This is the hole. Let's make the tackle. Like, that's good linebacker play by both those guys. And that's something that they weren't getting a ton of. He wasn't doing that early. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice to see because that's that's 19th pick overall type stuff right there. And so, like, that's exciting as a fan to see him starting to show signs of that. 
Okay. So now here we are, uh, second and seven at Washington 17, uh, after Kansas City gained a three. And I'll let this one run through. That looked like some good coverage right there. Yeah. I'll play it back. Yeah, and I think, like, again, like, my eye is drawn to Jamin Davis here because the way he matches this concept, right? He doesn't – he knows where his help is, right? He doesn't freak out. His feet are calm. He's he's understanding, like, I can rally to this and still make the tackle. Like, I like that. When that vertical route passes him by, he doesn't chase it. He knows he's got help by the safety. He sits. When Kelsey goes to the middle zone, he doesn't chase that either. It's, it's a very mature, nuanced uh, coverage approach that I think is pretty cool, you know? Yeah, doesn't chase either, and then can make the tackle. Nice, good job. Like, that's what the – I know everyone's like, well, they completed the ball, but that's what the coverage is designed to do. You know what I'm saying? So, like – Yeah, I was just going to say, I think uh, you, you brought up a, a good point, like an obvious point, but something that kind of needs to be re reiterated to people that's watching, but also people that's listening, um, Logan, is that the important thing is, like, you got to understand, passes will get completed, but it's not always about, like – there's going to be some positive yards gain. There will be completed catches. Uh, it's all about what you do uh, in your coverage assignments, but also what you do after the ball is completed. And they they mitigated it. It was a second and seven. They got a gain of three. They set themselves up in a decent position on third down and third and four at the Washington 14. Right. All right, here we go. On this one. This is a bad play by everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this oh, is Lord, a play. This that... Is that play. <laughs> oh. yeah. Who is number like one, that. man? <laughs> oh man, embarrassing people like that. I'm gonna go back. All right, that's uh, Jared McKinnon. Jared oh, McKinnon. it's McKinnon. McKinnon. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, sorry. Right. And this is good. Like the, everything up until right with it right, right. there <laughs> everything is perfect. This is exactly what you want. Yes. Third down, you force a check down, right? You're making a tackle at the sticks. This is fantastic football here, right? Bad job on the tackle. This is Jamin. Bad job not getting him out of bounds here. And then, you know, like, that's tough tackle for a corner on a running back. But, like, that's – everyone Everyone sees that and says, oh, no. But to me, that's something they weren't even doing the week prior to this, right? They weren't keeping everything in front of them. They weren't doing that. They were giving up coverages in the back end. So – as much as that is a terrible play and that's like super frustrating to watch as a fan of just football period, uh -huh. like that's an improvement in a sense because like there wasn't a big play given up for a touchdown. Absolutely. Okay, so what I'm going to do – oh, they don't show the interception. That's why. That makes sense. Um, they went straight to Washington's. Um, okay, so we have about 740. We can go to the second. Is this it? Yeah, this one, the interception right here. Um, and then the touchdown drive for, where is that one at? Right here, Kansas City, make them go up 17, 13. All right, here we go. Um, so right now, everybody, this is Kansas City's drive heading into the half um, where Wa Washington, I believe, is up 13 to 10. And I'll go ahead and get it started right now. All right, here we go. Oh, this play. All right, I'll go so, ahead and play it back. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, I think, like I said, I think overall the defense did a really good job of keeping everything in front of them and forcing Patrick Mahomes to, like, methodically move the football, which allowed them to get some turnovers and, and kind of capitalize on that. Okay, so watch William Jackson III up here at the top of the screen. He's the corner. Uh, yes, there he is. Thank you. And watch his footwork here. Like, he should drop with a little depth. He doesn't need to sit on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. He can rally to that. He needs to get a little bit more depth to make this throw a little bit harder. Now, this is an outstanding throw, and it probably would have been completed anyway. But at least you might be able to talk the quarterback out of it with your body position being a little deeper. And I think if you compare that to the, the DB at the bottom of the field, watch Benjamin St. Juice yeah. here. Watch, watch how he gets good depth here and is able to take away the quarter. You see that difference there in, in, in body language yeah. compared to William Jackson III? I think one guy understands the principle of – and, you know, to, to be fair to William Jackson here, he's getting eyes here. So 
Mahomes might be looking at Kelsey, which might get him to stop his feet. And that's good quarterback play, right? But still, like, just be a little bit patient. Take another shuffle there. And I think this throw is much harder to complete. And then you can rally to that ball and make a tackle, is what I think. Okay. Jamal, am I talking too much? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I don't, right. I'm, I'm, look, I'm a, I'm a student personally. Um, if I got questions, I ask them. But I'm, I'm over here listening to everything that you're saying, boss. And, and on top of that, uh, you got to remember, too, you know, we got people on the stream side listening to you and then the people on the podcast. You are doing just fine, my man. Trust All me. Right. <laughs> All right. So here we are. Uh, next play. It is first and 10 at Kansas City's 35. Um, all right. So I'll let it play and then rewind it back. All right. So I'll go back. Um. So what is this? I think I think that's landing in the box. I can't. Yeah, landing. Landing. Oh, like right. landing, and then I'm trying to figure out what coverage this is. All right, I'll go ahead and play it again. This looks like like quarters ish kind of. It's weird. It's a weird coverage because see how oh, the, so the guy at the bottom has a lot of depth. So I don't really know exactly like what's supposed to happen here. But because he's getting so deep here, uh, the guy at the top. Um, um, I would imagine yeah. it's some form of quarters. You know, right. like with William Jackson up top here getting so much depth, I think it's probably some oh, form of here, quarters. Right, they're, they're just getting to it in a different way. All right. Yeah. So this is the one where yeah. I said Landon was over here looking like a, a tortoise when he when when Kelsey caught that ball. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I, I, like I, I think back to the whole time, it seems like. And so this is one of the deficiencies of quarters coverage, right? So if you let it play, and this is kind of a cool way of getting to it. Pause it right here, please. So if you look, you've got four guys in the back. So starting with William Jackson at the top on the receiver, one, and then Bobby McCain, two, Cameron Curl, three, Kendall Fuller, four, right? And so when you play quarters, you defeat all the vertical stuff, but you really only have three guys underneath in coverage, which is Benjamin St. Just, uh, Holcomb, and then uh, Collins at the, at, the, at, the, at the top of the screen here. So in quarters coverage, traditional quarters coverage, the weak spot here is the flat because there's no one there and it's too much grass to ask Landon to cover. So this is where the ball should go. Good job by Mahomes getting the ball there. And it's a tough duty by Landon Collins. He looks bad, but like that's where the, that's where the hole of the coverage is. So it's all about the for, – for this specific uh, play, it's about the call that was made given the, the assignments. Like it's going to be hard for these guys to cover the flats. Just in general. Yes, correct. Okay. correct. All right. So question. And well, I guess it's I guess it's a simple answer, but it seems like when you're when you're in the flats or if you have the flats responsibility, you're just taking the man that comes towards you. Is that, is um, that you know? it, so again, it depends on how they coach it and the okay. rules for their coverages. But uh, yeah, so like if, if like it's cover two, for example, where, you, where there are quarters out there for the flats, they would have the thing that runs to the flat. Okay. which would be, you know, like that, like in that case, that route would be the quarters, right? If they were in cover two, but they were in like a quarters ish type shell, which means there's less coverage underneath and those flats are going to be wide open. Okay. So I do have a question from the chat. Um, what's going on Montel? Uh, he, he did just check in, but I do, I do want to give uh, your response to his question directly. He asked, do you think that the players are being used to their strength after watching film? Uh, do you think the game plan is too simplistic or are they just lacking effort and execution? I know we talked about this heading into the heading into the film session, but um, you do have that opportunity to kind of help. Uh, my yeah, team. so I think, like I said before, like early on in the season, I would agree somewhat with that sentiment. I think there was a lot of like learning happening by everybody. I think that's one of the issues with not playing of guys in preseason is you don't know exactly what you're working with uh, until you're in the season, right? And so I thought last week against uh, – uh, New Orleans, there was a nice change in terms of defensive play calling, getting your best people on the field, a nice game plan philosophy. And like, if you take away two plays, if you take away the, the Hail Mary, which is ridiculous, and then you take away that bomb to landing Collins, like they win that game pretty easily. You know what I mean? They win that, they held New Orleans to 20 points. And I know it's hard to say what if, right? But one's a coverage bust and one's a freak play. And then if you look at this week, I thought the defense played really good for most of the game. However, when you're playing a team this talented, eventually, and you're not getting any support from your offense, like you're going to see breakdowns. And I think that's what happened with this group. Um, so in answer to the question, I thought early on, yes, there were some issues schematically and personnel-wise. 
that now I think they're starting to get out of. And I think if you look at um, look at these last two games, I'm you know they're just two games, but I'm optimistic going up to Green Bay that they're a group that's kind of uh, that that is what we thought they were going to be at the beginning of the season. They still have deficiencies; they're still not perfect. But I'm excited about what this group's going to be bringing next week. And I can't say the same for the offense, basically. Hey, look, Logan, I am a gambler. Do I need to? Do I need to go ahead and put that put that uh, money on the nine and a half, or or wait it out a little bit? Is it nine and a half right now? Uh, it was ten on Sunday, and then it, I saw it this morning, and it, it dropped to I think nine and a half or nine, one of those. That's so, interesting. Yeah. That's interesting because I will say I started my evaluation at Green Bay today, and they are running the football a little bit more than I thought they would be. They're about fifty percent. Mm-hmm. which is unusual. And uh, Aaron Rodgers just seems a little out of sync. So I don't, I let me hit me up on Instagram <laughs> on Friday and I'll tell you what to do. I got you. All right. Copy that, man. I mean, I'm going to tune in regardless. To, uh, Cause I think you're on one Oh six, seven anyway. So I'm going to be paying attention regardless. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing in. Um, Where are we at? First and 15 at Washington is 34. Um, we're going to go ahead and run this play and then let uh, Logan talk about it afterwards. But I was okay. Well, he was open. That's great. I mean, that's great stuff right there by everybody, right? I was watching the rush there. Okay. But let it go for a sec. Like, great job getting under that stuff. Like, great job on the back end out here. Like, if you rewind it. All right, I'm going to go back. Like, but it did look yeah. like, um too, that uh when I said he was open on second thought, Kendall did force kind of a, a more difficult pass anyway. So, um, it does help out. All right, let me go back. Here we go. Yeah, so a couple things to point out here. Like, first off, just guys doing a great job getting to their zones, understanding that when the quarterback's rolling right, they can push this zone more towards the sideline, right? We talked about the flats are open in this kind of – this is cover three, so it's a little bit less murky, but it's still hard to get out there. But still, understanding when the quarterback rolls right, you can roll with the quarterback. And as they go with him, they condense all these strong windows. Great job by Benjamin St. Juice on the bottom, staying with his work, even though the quarterback's running away, knowing Patrick Mahomes is a beast. And I, what I love is seeing Chase being a beast. You know what I mean? They try to cut him. They try to roll away, and he's still in pursuit. I love that. I love the way they're condensing throwing windows. I love the way Holcomb is matching concepts and not just running through zones. I think that's great. I think overall, man, like this is this is good stuff by the defense. You know what I mean? And it's – um and it's it's underrated, but it's all good. And that's stuff that they weren't doing early, which I think is exciting. That's exciting for me to see. Good Lord, they're not showing an interception. What? Who? Who? In, is that interception was garbage anyway. Yeah, I mean, whoever's doing NFL Game Pass, man, has been. <laughs> they make it everything rough. a headache. I don't get it. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead. Um, where are we at here? I'm in the half. All right, so we're going to go to the touchdown drive that puts Kansas City up. 17 to 13. Um, this is the third quarter. The second. Oh, it's a punt right here. They, they did force a punt. Let's get to it. I don't know how I skipped that, but it's the beginning of the third quarter. Um, Kansas City ends up um, punting the ball after the after the the, the the halftime break. So I'll go ahead and get started with this one. Um, I don't want to just skip over this. This is uh, all right. Let me go back. Like, look at Montez here. Oh, love that. Great stuff from Montez. All right, go back again. Maybe this will work. Here we go. Yeah, that's much better. Let's just start using that. Montez, great job. Like, just create no space. Like, just bull this tight end back, like being a beast. You know, like, love that. And they closed that lane real quick. It was there for yeah, a split second. Then, like, that's just great. Like, I mean, that's just physical play by the defensive front. You know, that's the kind of dominant performance you expect to see from those guys. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, there's no air. Like, and this whole line for Kansas City is pretty solid. Like, they have two rookies starting, but they're all they graded the 90s by PFF, right? They got Orlando Brown. Like, this is a good group it's on paper too, anyway. I believe, right? I forgot the center's name, yeah. though. Humphrey, Creed Humphreys, okay. I think is his name. All right. So, that's next one. Fumble. Looks like there was a problem with the video. Hey, come on now. I'll be doing that. Man, you gotta sit, you gotta pull your strings, man, and get to that guy at PFF and be like, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Hold on, man. What in the world just happened? Um, let me see if this your cousin works for PFF, right? Man, I wish. I wish. 
Uh, Dude, it's been bad, man. I'll be a nigger this whole time. Um, all right, it's here we go. Bad. I think we're back. It's it's Start. terrible. Start. Everything was fine last last year. I, it was nothing wrong with the format, but for whatever reason, they wanted to change things. Okay, here we are. Nine mm -hmm. yard pass. Let's get back to it. Um, all right, here we go. Yeah, let it play out. A little pressure. Yeah, soft zones. So anytime you bring uh, five, which they did there, you get light in the coverage a little bit, right? So watch it. They, do they drop somebody out? I don't think so. But anytime you bring five, you limit the amount of coverage you can have underneath, right? We just talked about that with the cover two in the corners. Oh, so, they so here they go three deep. So they got three deep players, the corner, the safety, the other corner, and then three underneath, which is the safety, the linebacker, and uh, Cole Holcomb down here at the bottom. So this look at all the grass those three guys underneath have to cover. And it's like, it's so unfair for them to have to do that. You know what I mean? You really are counting on this pressure getting home. A great job by Mahomes here. So seeing, why, seeing, go ahead, you can finish. I just have a question. No, 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 just seeing the seeing the throw, like on a short notice kind of thing. All right. So here we go. So my thing is, or I, what I want to understand, I'm not I'm not gonna criticize him, but I understand that clearly Landon is disguising it. But he's, he kind of puts himself in a disadvantage starting at the 30, right? What is blitz? Yeah, I mean, you want to just – so, like, you want to take advantage of – you want to make it, like – blitz pickup is – most of the time you're just trying to confuse somebody into not blocking you, right? And so, based on what they have here in protection, I'm really surprised the offensive lineman even sees him because it looks like they're sliding to the left. And so, that's a good job by him of having some type of awareness. But, yeah, like – this is tough, man. Like, there's so much grass here. Look at all these people that are open. Like, it's just too much grass to cover. So, I like that they kind of got away from that against Kansas City this last year, this last uh -huh. game, because I think it makes it really hard for the underneath guys to play well. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, first and 10, Kansas City third, th uh, 35. They just got a first down on the second and nine. So, I'm going to go back to this one right quick. Um, all right, here we go. So, yeah, this looks like it's quarters again. And, like, Jack Del Rio seems to really like quarters. But, like, anytime you run quarters, like, this little hitch here is, like, stealing. Because this is really hard to cover. So, like, look up top. Look at all the grass up top there. Like, I have never been with a defense that runs so much quarters as them. And, obviously, he likes it. But, I, to me, it, it like, stresses me out. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Oh. Oh, first and San Kansas City, 45. Um, and this, I'm gonna just hit this. There we go. Yeah, a little while on Tez there, kind of get like vacating his lane there. Watch him at the bottom. How he like this is, I don't know what he maybe thinks is a pass. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, see how, how wide he gets. And then you're asking Cam Curl, that's his nice job by Kansas City. So if you rewind it for a sec, I got you. Yeah, thanks. So if you watch, watch the linebackers with the motion and they kick over, right? So if you look at the gaps, Cam Curl right here at the uh, right, yep, he's got to fit in between the tackle and the guard here, but he's doing it from depth, which is not uncommon. But watch what the receiver is able to do uh, for Kansas City down here at the bottom of the screen when he has to fit from depth. So that's the B gap defender. He's able to get in his way enough, right, to get to keep him from fitting down in there, so that this is a nice easy run for. Uh, for uh hey is this is this a hold or is that like yes, something it is a hold. all right it's a hold okay <laughs> but actually but i think they called that didn't they receivers usually get lost in the holding mix usually so like on derrick henry's big run last night there was a hold that they didn't call i'm glad they didn't because i had that plus five and a half man i needed that <laughs> <laughs> i needed that okay here we go uh third and 23 kansas city 32 um i i'll uh, it doesn't even matter. I was going back out and see if they called the flag, but third and 23. Um, Great job. Who is that? That was. That Kittle? Nice job. See. That Kittle Fuller. Oh, yeah. Hey, so what's your nice thing? Play. What's your, your issue? Oh, it's 754, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Um, So I, I'll, I'll, I'll go to a couple of questions um, to close this out, and, and we can get up out of here. Let me go back to. Um, stop this. Here, there we go. Okay, cool. 
So what's the thing with, with Kendall Fuller, um, in your opinion? Now, again, we, you kind of broke down your, your, your analysis on William Jackson and understanding that uh, a lot of things that you think uh, obviously has something to do, in your, your opinion, is something to do with his footwork and things like that. Um, and with Kendall Fuller, a guy who, uh, from a fan base perspective, again, thought that he would be best served in the slot in the offseason. Like, this was all the idea, have Benjamin St. Juice on the outside, and we can finally yeah. get Kendall Fuller inside. Um, and as the season goes along, six weeks in, he's having, perceivably, he's having issues on the outside and inside. Um, what is your opinion on Kendall Fuller to this point? And, and again, your truth of, of what he is this point, this part into the season, excuse me. Yeah, so I think Kendall Fuller is like a good nickel player. And I think it's been good to have Benjamin St. Juice uh, a, a part of this team because I think he's been playing really well outside. I think he's been getting some really tough matchups. You know, we just talked about a little bit like in quarters how there's all that grass underneath and he's responsible for covering that grass underneath. And um, that makes people look silly. And obviously, like when he's in man coverage sometimes, like he's not the fastest guy in the world and he, and he draws tough matchups, good football players play in the slot oftentimes, like Cole Beasley comes to mind as one guy that he had to cover. And that's a tough matchup for anybody. So I think that that's important to consider. Um, I see a guy who's more comfortable in zone and they're running a little bit more man, man this year. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think that's, he's they're, they're kind of getting him out of his comfort zone. They're getting William Jackson the third out of his comfort zone, running a little bit more zone, maybe that he's not familiar with. Uh, so you're kind of getting this weird dichotomy, this weird relationship where, you're taking what Kendall Fuller is good at and you're letting him do less of it. And you're taking what we invest in the third is good at and you're having him do less of that. So I think that's part of the reason for the, um, for some of their struggles. I'm, I'm going to ask you a tough question. And again, this is another theory of mine that I kind of thought about uh, over the, up the past couple of days. Logan, did, did they make a mistake getting rid of Ron Darby and, and, um, uh, what's his name? Jimmy Moreland. And the reason why I ask this is because it's not about, because uh, a lot of people will say this, we're not a Jimmy Moreland person away from being a great defense or we're not a Ron Darby away from being a great defense. Perfectly fine. But here's what I think. There's always players, regardless of how you view them from your standpoint, there's always players that fit well within the scheme and the players within it. And I feel like sometimes when you get ahead of yourself, and this is me talking, I don't want to, I don't want you to, you know, you can say what you want, but this is me talking. I feel like when, when your eyes get big from a manager standpoint or a decision-making standpoint from the coaches, um, you kind of feel like you don't need to do, you don't need to deal with Ron Darby because uh, William Jackson to come here and he's a better player. I could pay him more money. I'm not going to pay you this amount of money. I don't need you. Uh, I don't need Jimmy Moreland because I have Troy McTire. I have uh, J Benjamin St. Juice. Uh, Troy Ackley could serve as special teams. I don't need you right now to play slot, even though you were one of the best slot corners, things like that. This is me talking, but I want to get your opinion. Did they make a mistake um, getting rid of Ron Darby or even even um, Jimmy Moreland? So this is a really interesting question. And uh, me as a player would say, yeah, they probably made a mistake getting rid of Jimmy Warren. It seemed like a good fit. But I think what's important to consider, like I had a conversation with an Italian evaluator when I was playing that I had a lot of respect for. Basically he said like there's three to five players on every roster in the NFL that are scheme independent. And what I mean by that is they can play in any scheme, right? And those players, because the organization has identified them, usually don't leave in free agency, right? So everybody else is kind of interchangeable from a talent standpoint, right? If you look at Ronald Darby, he had a tough game last week, right, in uh, Denver. And I would imagine he would have a tough game with the Washington football team, right? Like, to me, the difference between Ronald Darby and William Jackson III is somewhat negligible. And I think what you get with William Jackson III is just a better athlete and so that seems like an upgrade. And you're paying them about the same amount of money, right? Same thing with Jimmy Moreland, right? I know the fans love him here. He was a big, big popular person. And um, I get that. But, like, the organization, the GM doesn't see it that way. He sees it as, like, we've brought in a young guy in Benjamin St. Juice who adds more value. He can play outside in addition to playing inside. He can play outside. And then we have Kendall Fuller who can bump inside. And at the beginning of the season when they start talking about that, that's more advantageous to this team. You get better football players with more experience on the field together. I think that's something that needs to be considered is 
the NFL and teams, GMs don't view players as like this guy is a good guy. They say they're interchangeable pieces, right? So can I get a, a piece that's about the same? And I think they have. I don't think Jimmy Moreland being here, plus or minus, uh, affects the team as long as they get somebody else who's comparable to Jimmy Moreland, which I think they've done with Tory McTire. And I think that's kind of the musical chairs of the NFL. Absolutely. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that was Logan uh, Paulson, man. And uh, Logan, you were great. I, I appreciate the insight. Um, like I said, man, I was I, I, I was quiet. You were talking. Uh, but trust me, every single thing, uh, it's, it's always something that you can learn. I'm a humble guy. I'm here. I'm here to learn. So I appreciate your insight, man. And, uh, hopefully we can do this down the road, but obviously you're a busy man. So I'll just check in with you. Um, see when you're free and things like sure. that. See things at work, bro. But, um, let the people know where they can find you. Um, let the people know what you got going on, man. You, you're a pretty busy guy in a good way. Yeah. Pretty busy guy. Yeah. So you can follow me on Instagram at Logan underscore Paulson 82. I do some, uh, video like play breakdowns there. I am on uh, NBC Washington with uh, Julie Donaldson, do some stuff with her three times a week. And then I got uh, 106.7 The Fan, uh, do a pregame show. Uh, so guys, tune into that. It's all, always pretty good stuff. I mean, if you like more of me just talking my face off, then that's all good stuff, right? Well, look, so. that's, that's what this is for. You know, now they can see you and hear you talk your face off. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. So uh, uh, go ahead and get out of here, man. Enjoy your evening. Um, if you're watching the games, enjoy the games. I'm definitely about to tune in. I may have some action on the 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock game with the, 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 the Lakers and the Warriors. But enjoy your evening, man. I appreciate you checking in. Thanks, man. I appreciate you having me on. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to be back. Absolutely. All right. I'll talk to you, uh, talk to you later, boss. All right, man. Later. Peace. All right. So um, where are we at? How do I go to the face cam? There we go. All right. So, everybody, as you all see, that was – uh, Logan Paulson. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I have Logan Paulson and Logan Thomas in my head. So I was two seconds away from butchering his name. Um, but Logan Paulson is my guy. It's just a, it's a bad habit. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that wraps it up for today. We weren't able to get through the whole thing. Um, and you know, stuff like that happens. I don't want to hold his time. And obviously, uh, I don't want to hold everybody else. But um, if you like this content, just do me a favor. Give me some feedback. Um, you can give the feedback in here. Uh, you can also get the feedback on Twitter if you're following me on Twitter as well. Um, just let me know how these things are going. I mean, if this is something that we want, that we need to continue moving forward, I have no problem doing this. I have no problem reaching out to people to help me break down the film and stuff like that uh, so we can all learn. We can all get better um, and understand what we're seeing. Like, I bet you all didn't understand or didn't know that the defense was actually playing better over the past couple of weeks. Y'all know for me, I, I'll tell you right now, the defense is terrible. Like, I told you that. So it's interesting to see that Logan Paulson believes that uh, the defense actually played good the last couple of weeks. So um, that's that. Um, all right. Won't hold you all. Enjoy your evening. I will be back tomorrow with the All 32 Side of the Chopper Die podcast and then back again on Thursday. Um, again, giveaway this Sunday. Uh, appreciate everybody who's been rocking with me. Appreciate everybody who's been tuning in, uh, spending their time with me, spending however much time they want or however much time they choose to spend it with me uh, as we talk about the Washington football team and the headache that is. Um, so, um, yeah, giveaway post-game of the Packers. Yep, so with that being said, I'm out of here. Y'all be safe. All that good stuff. Peace. Hold hard in the trenches. Ask a nigga what he bet you. Triple digits, nigga. Don't forget to mention. Hold hard in the trenches.